Hey everybody, welcome back. It's been a while, but uh, I got that haircut that I wanted, so like I promised you guys, the next video you see I would have a haircut. It's been a lot longer than I uh, wanted to in terms of putting out a video, but it's due to a couple of things. Um, one, because of work, I haven't been able to put as much time as I want to into these videos. And I've realized that there, like I've said before, I want to make these videos as good as possible. And I'm not going to put out something that I don't feel I'm comfortable with. Uh, that also ties into the fact that you guys won't probably won't be able to tell from what I'm doing right here. But I'm using uh, an iPad for all these videos that I've been putting up. And it's been nice and very accessible to do that. But at the same time, I've also have seen that there's less quality in terms of some of the work um, than when I've, I've been, if I put it up on a laptop. Or, or with a web camera. So, um, I'm waiting until I get my laptop back to do some more music covers, which should be within a week or two. And then once I get that, I'll be able to do the acapella songs that I've want, been wanting to do, which would give me another outlet for music that I can put out there. Um, and I have some really, really cool ideas coming up, so please just stick with me with that. I'll, I should be putting up a couple more videos pretty soon, but uh, as of now, uh, I come to the second reason, and the reason for what I'm doing today. Uh, I've been working on a project for review, uh, well, a, a top 50 list, per se, that I, I've talked about before. Um, I just have to, had to finish it up. And I finally got it done this week, and now I've been working on details, how to go by with this. Uh, so that it uh, runs as smoothly as possible, as well as you get enough information in the a lot of time. Uh, I actually tried to do a couple of videos of this a couple days ago with a uh, top 10 worst CD list of 2013, and it's just a, a list of so CDs that didn't make the cut for the top 50, but should be listened to either way. Um, but they ran it a little bit too long, and there were a couple problems with it, so I decided to put those up. Uh, so I'm going to start with this one. And bear in mind that this is my first top 50 countdown, my first countdown in general. Um, I will not be editing any of this stuff because I don't have the, the capabilities of doing that right now. So uh, what you see is what you get. I'm going to try to make this as quickly as possible, um, but give you enough information. Um, so let me know how you guys like this, this countdown if you want to see more of them. Uh, the idea is I'm going to go to the top 50 within the next five days. So today's going to be part one, tomorrow's going to be part two, next day part three, and so on and so forth until everything's done. Um, and then if you want to see, um, you know, top 10 worst list of 2013 or top or the uh, the other list, the so uh, series that you haven't heard about but should take a listen to that didn't make the top 50 list. Um, I could put those up, but I'll probably just revise them a little bit later. Um, so yeah, that is the idea. And just a quick premise behind why I do this. Because this seems really weird to do it, you know, halfway through 2014. Um, but it, it comes down to I didn't have a lot of time listening to all these CDs while getting, uh, you know, my bachelor degree at UMass. Especially during my senior year. So... I took a little bit of time off of it and kept going back to it, and, and it also was due to just a, a, a list of CDs that were like just ever increasing and just sitting there, you know, listening to tens, you know, trying to listen to ten CDs, fifteen CDs in two days, it starts to wear on you. So I try to take a break in between to, you know, get this feeling the right way so that I don't have biases just because I didn't like it because I was just tired. Um, so that's the idea of that. Uh, why, but why I did this, uh, this particular project comes down to because um, uh, throughout my teen years, uh, my, my family would get Rolling Stone magazine. And um, I like some of the stuff there, that they have in there. Some of the interviews were really cool, uh, but they always seem to drop the ball in terms of uh, music reviews and CD reviews. Um, they do pretty well with what they have, but at the same time, 
they miss a lot of genres that I feel like should be looked at, uh, like um, prog rock, mu- uh, metal, harder rock, um, jazz, just like a lot of that type of stuff. And it's their right that they can do whatever they want, but at the same time, it doesn't give a clear... It it leaves out all these these, you know, industries, th- these t- uh, forms of music that a lot of people listen to. And um, it just focuses on pop, on rap, and, and like, older stuff. And it's unfortunate. Because then, come Grammy time, when people are voting for CDs, they don't know about all these other CDs. I There have only been a couple of times when the hard rock, you know, album was up for album of the year. Um, the only one I can really think about was Wasting Light a couple of years ago uh, by Foo Fighters. Um, so it's, it's unfortunate because we, you're missing out that whole chunk of music out there. Um, so I decided like, you know, I'm going to put on my CD list because I don't know as much as everybody else, but I feel like I can listen to enough, give my own ideas and present a list that, you know, is balanced a little bit better. And we'll put out some CDs that, you know, people won't probably have heard about uh, case in point, 2012, I had a top 25 list that I was working on. Uh, didn't put it up because it, I felt like I took too much time on it. Uh, but the top two CDs, um, no one, uh, from what I've seen in terms of like Rolling Stone or Grammys, no one had um, taken a look at these CDs or uh, reviewed them in their magazine. Um, and... I had number three was the the uh, Muffin and Sons, the CD that won that year. But other than that, like the top two, I don't know if anyone of my friends ever talked about it, or except for one, but that's basically it. Uh, so the that's the process for me. If I can get out music that not many people know about, but would be interested in listening to, it, it helps out with, you know, going in the future, maybe... A more balanced system in terms of, of Grammys or any music awards because I do feel like it's always the same stuff coming out and then we have this culture of pop music or dance music rather than music that is you know um, deep or has a meaning or stuff like that you know we've had our system of music for about a hundred years now starting with blues and working its way up and we come to a point where we can be cultured. It doesn't have to be classical music, but we can have stories, deep meaning, and, you know, have it popular. So, that's my idea. How I went through this process, I listened to 100 CDs. Uh, I started with 100 CDs, and then I started adding more and more. And the only process for me was, if I knew the band, or if I've heard the band, I'm going to listen to the CD, no matter how good or bad it is. Um... And then after that, I waited until the top 50 list came out for Rolling Stone. Compared it with them, you know, listened to any CD that I hadn't heard before on um, on there. And then picked the 50 that I thought were the best. Started working on that, trying to see where they all fit. That meant I had to listen to all 50 again and over and over again until I figured out 50 to 1. So that took a long time. Um, but I finally have it done. And I think it's a pretty good list. So... Uh, just quick guidelines on, you know, how I, I rank these things. The only one ground rule is that the CD had to come out in 2013. Not a single, but the CD itself. That means, um, you know, Macklemore, which came out in 2012, but had singles in 2013, does not count. Uh, as well as Imagine Dragons. It came out in 2012, had singles in 2013. What also doesn't count is Pharrell's uh, CD, because... Happy came out in 2013, but their CD came out in 2014. So, nothing like that. It had to be strictly 2013. Um, which also means no Kendrick Lamar, because he was 2012. Um, and then, other than that, it's, you know, what I think works. It, like, for me, what's important for music is musical content. Like, is it all sound the same? And if it does all sound the same, does it work? Uh, if it's different, does it work well enough, or does it just sound scatterbrained? Lyrical content, do the lyrics mean anything? You know, are, are, do they stick out to me? Will I remember them? 
do they fit well with the music or is it just cliche over cliche over cliche? Um, time versus content. So are these CDs starting to you know, wear on you or are they like 50 minutes long and they all feel like the same thing? Or you know, is it 30 minutes and you wish that it was more? Um, and then memorability is a big one. Like, would I want to listen to this again? Is it memorable to me? You know, how many times would I listen to it over and over? Because there were a lot of good CDs who that I would probably only listen to once. Um, so yeah, and even with all that, there's probably a lot of CDs that could move a, a, a step or two. It's very hard. Like, there's in the 50s, there's some in the 50s that should be in the 40s. There's some, you know, in the 40s that should be in the 30s, vice versa. I... The top 10, honestly, could go any way, a lot of them. The top three could move, like, number one could be number two, vice versa. This is just my list, and this is my list now. That doesn't mean it would, it couldn't change um, somewhere down the line. It's just what I like, and I like all these CDs. So, um, just because something is 50, that does not mean it's a bad CD. So, there's there. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to get down... I'm actually, I said top 50, and I've been saying top 50, uh, but I did add a 51, number 51, because of um, one of the CD, one of the people on this, in this list have two spots. It was supposed to be a double album, but both CDs are two totally different that I didn't want to put them together. I felt like they both deserve a spot, but that's further down the line. Um, so, number 51 is uh, The Flaming Lips, The Terror. Uh, now, I had never listened to a Flaming Lips CD before. Uh, my friend John had always told me, you know, take a listen to them. They're really cool. They're really out there. I just never took a listen. And then I saw, you know, The Terror, and it really intrigued me. Uh, the lead singer, Wayne Co uh I want to say this right, Wayne Coyne, I believe how, that's how you say it. Um, talked about like the production of the CD, and it was really interesting hearing about like the idea. He came up with the idea that you know we all think that love will save us, and then you know if you, if there is no love, then there is no life, because what's the meaning of that? But then taking that a step further. Even though there, you know, there isn't any love in your life, that doesn't mean that life is over. Life still goes on, and that's could be, you know, either soothing or scary. So, uh, you know, they use that as it's the the idea of their sound. And when I first listened to it, um, I can't say I necessarily like it because it's hard to like something like this. It's the way I, I first heard it and first listened to it, I thought, like, I was listening to Oblivion, you know, like, the world ending and then everything happening after that, you know, all the craziness, all the insanity that goes on with the world ending or our, our idea of the world ending. Um, and it was very interesting. I can't remember a lot of this stuff. You know, it it's like with... Um, my Bloody Valentine's new CD that just missed the cut. Um, they're both really like atmospheric, you know, um, stuff that you can't really listen to and, to and grasp in one sitting. It takes a while. Um, and it's something that you, you can't have any, like any other surrounding, um, you know, distractions, no, no lights, no sound. Nothing else. You should just sit down and listen to it. Um, it's very, very out there for me. Like I asked after I listened to this, I listened. I asked my friend John, "Is this like how all their CDs are like?" And he said, "Like it's kind of like it." Um, so after this, I haven't actually listened to any more Flaming Lips CDs. I'm not saying it's because I don't like it. It's more like I need to further grasp it. And why it's so low is because. I can't remember a lot about it. It's very, it is a very, uh, it's a very long CD, first off. It's 55 minutes. Um, and like out of these 11 that I'm talking about right now, it's one of the, the longest. Uh, but 
it just really sucks you in, and you want to listen to it again. And I will definitely listen to it again somewhere down the line, just not now. And, um, you know, I can't really say anything much more about it. It's just something that you need to listen to on your own. Um, so that's number 51. Uh, number 50 is, it's actually going to probably be the, the first, like, why did you put this here? Especially because of where Rolling Stone put theirs, uh, put it in their list. Um, but I have Kanye West's Yeezy, Yeezus, sorry, Yeezus at number 50. Um, honestly, I, like, I, I don't understand, I can understand a little bit why Rolling Stone would put it at number two, but not enough to, you know, say, oh, it has to be up there. Um, whereas number 51, it was a really interesting experience, you know, to listen to, and I will listen to it again. Everyone's been saying, um, you know, this is, this is so cool because it's so dark and something that we've never listened to for a rap album. And I'll admit, there is a lot of originality in it. And that's why I still kept it on this list. But to me, all the dark tones that um, he tried to put in the CD, you know, his lyrics were the one thing that got in the way. Whereas this could have been like a very cool, very concept album idea where, you know, very dark, very dark message like what he did with um, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. It's not, I don't know if it's necessarily a concept album per se, but like the ideas that went around with it, as well as the video, the, you know, in, um, encompassing a lot of the, the songs um, on that album, it worked really, really well. Um, and I will say in its defense, that if it wasn't, you know, Kanye, if there's anyone right now who could have put that CD out, it is Kanye, because he has took in rap to a different state, to a different idea, where I don't know if 10 or 20 years ago we would have been able to have a CD like My Beautiful Dark Twist of Fantasy, because it does border on a lot of crazy ideas. Um, the the tracks that they use aren't very conventional when you think about rap. Like there, there was twenty first century schizoid man for power, which is a, you know, a, 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 I guess a prog rock song. Um, you know all these other ideas. It it was dark and it worked, but so that's why he was able to put out Jesus because he took that step. So going to this next step isn't that crazy of an idea. But it doesn't work in terms of lyrics and with that. Like, there's more of it being about his ego to me than it is, you know, trying to be dark. Um, you know, I am a god. Self, you know, he, he's just stroking his ego basically on that one. Um, and the one that does it, like, for me, that annoys me a lot is Blood on the Leaves. Um, and for those who don't know, what he is sampling on that song is Nina Simone's Strange Fruit. And if you want to know, if you want to hear a dark song, that is about lynching. You know, during, during slavery, you know, African American lynching. And to use that track, um, to talk about his, um, you know, relationship with uh, Kim Kardashian and about how he has a baby with her, to me, it seems really, really blasphemous. But then again, I, it's not my choice. I can't go out there and say, you can't do that. But it doesn't work, and it's borderline, you know, taking this very powerful song and then making it worth nothing. Um but does that mean that there isn't any redeeming qualities on this CD? No, I, I think that the, I think New Slaves and Black Skinhead are very, very powerful songs. And, you know, um, try to take the medium to a different, to a different place. And I'm happy that he did that. I would, if he does another CD like this, I would like to see less about him and more about, you know, the dark aspect. I think he could pull off a really cool concept album with that, if he takes these ideas, and I think if he does that next, I think it could be 
a pinnacle CD in rap, but right now it's just um, just another rap album to me. Uh, all right, number forty nine is uh, and people are gonna be kind of weird on this one, but number forty nine is actually Avenged Sevenfold's "Hail to the King," and it people might think it's a little bit crazy that I'm putting a metal CD in front of the number two album of the year, but. I did enjoy it. I enjoyed it. Is it as good as all their other CDs? Absolutely not. Um, I mean, it, but then again, it's really hard to sit there and try to make another CD when like that when um, their drummer died. And their drummer, Jimmy the Red Sullivan, was one of the best metal drummers out there at the time. He was so good that when he died while they were uh, working on Nightmare... They put in um, Dream Theater's drummer, Mike Portnoy, um, and it, he was able to complement what they were doing, what he was doing on those albums. But after that, he, he left, and you need to find someone else. And the person that they found, um, and I'm going to say this name wrong, but I believe it's Arlen Iljoy. Um, he was the drummer of Confide before going to Event Sevenfold. He has a completely different style. And so in order to complement his style with the band, you have to take a different tactic. And they did it well. It's more of a, th I would say a lot of the stuff is more of a thrash kind of sound than, um, you know, what they were working on. Uh, but it works. It does have like a, 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 I guess, late 80s, early 90s Metallica feel. Um, especially with Hell to the King. Um, and heretic and it works well it's a different style and it works well with M Shadow's uh, vocals and I would like to hear a little bit more of that come next album um, and also even with that there are some really cool ideas that they had that you know then they kind of pushed you know where they hadn't been before uh, Requiem has a more uh, it has a more orchestral feel um, it's with the fresh, so it brings it to even another step. And then Acid Rain, the last song on the album, um, is kind of a homage to uh, to I won't see you tonight off of um, Waking the Fallen, except it doesn't have the shitty second part to it, and it works really well to, with the end of it. It's a beautiful song, especially for a metal album. So, it is a little bit long, again, 53 minutes, but it works very well. And none of these songs feel um, too long, because that's what metal is. It works very well. And uh, uh, Sinister Gates' guitar work is just as good, even with the thrash. So, if you're a metal fan, take a listen to it. I know a lot of uh, Event Sevenfold fans who aren't very high on it, but... It works very well for what it is. All right, forty-eight is kill switch engages, disarm the scent. Uh, now, personally, I was very wary on this CD only because um, their new their lead singer Howard Jones um, left the 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 band, and then Jesse Leach, the original lead singer, came back. Uh, personally, I was not a huge fan of Jesse Leach during the previous albums, and I really preferred Howard Jones. Um, he's the one who sang um, My Curse, Arms of Sorrow, you know, all the bigger hits that they had. So to see him leave was very sad. So I was really wondering what was going to happen, because he was more of a, uh, of a screamer than a singer at least in the previous albums that I saw. But he actually stepped up his game very well. And this is probably my favorite Killswitch Engage CD to date. Um, it's just very hard hitting. From start to finish, it's very, like, it just leaves you in the dust. And it's great to listen to if you just want to hear, you know, like a, a head-banging metal album. Um, in due time... Beyond the Flames, great songs, and the standout one to me is actually the one that's the, the slowest, is uh, Always. 
And it's a power ballad. It's not an 80s power ballad, but it is a power ballad. But it works very well. And I love it. I probably will eventually make a cover of that song somewhere down the line. And it's very simple, but it's very effective. And it's only 40 minutes, so it's not honestly that long of a CD uh, when compared to Event Sevenfold. So take a listen to it. I would say that it's not as memorable sometimes when it comes to... uh, when it comes to, you know, Hell to the King, because Hell to the King songs are a little bit more diverse, but nonetheless, it doesn't really matter as much because of the um, the short time. It doesn't overstay its welcome. All right, 47 is Elton John's uh, Diving Board. And I actually had this up a little bit higher before. Uh, sorry for the, the sun. I'm actually going to leave my finger there. Um... I added it up a little bit higher because I thought it was a really, really well done CD, especially for someone who has put out in his career 31 albums. Like, that is insane to think about. There are, most most bands nowadays have put out like four or five, you know, some of the older ones have put out maybe nine or ten. To put out 31 albums over a career is insane. And to be able to do as well, you know, right now than you were maybe in the 60s or 70s, it's just as impressive. Um, I will say there, it's not maybe, maybe his best album, but then again, you have 31. You have the right to have something that's not as good as your, your, your finest album. Um, and also, there probably won't be, you know, the song that stands out just like, you know, uh, Benny and the Jets or... Goodbye Yelpick Road, you know, any of his his better songs, you know, Saturday Night's Alright. Um, but in a, on the whole, it's a still really, really um, good album. Uh, Home Again, beautiful song. Uh, let's see. Kids in the Candlelight, just a fun song to listen to. And um, there are... He, I'll say the one problem I do have with the CD is that there are some weird uh, lyrical choices, I guess. Um, My Quicksand, the chorus is very, very interesting, as well as New Fever Waltz. But what I love about him is he's able to, you know, tell story through every song. And whether or not they are all connected, these four minutes that you listen to every song, it's still, you know... You can think about, it it lets you picture a lot of ideas that a lot of other singer-songwriters can't grasp or haven't been able to grasp. So, it's a long CD. It's the longest one I've talked about so far. It's 57 minutes, but each song is its own story. So, if you do like Elton John, you won't be disappointed. If you like some good storytelling, you won't be disappointed. Um, so we're basically halfway. Now we're at 46, and this one, again, will, people will be a little bit, um, not peeve, but probably wondering why it's here, and that is Lordy's um, Pure Heroin. Um, now, for what she did, she she's 17 years old, and I believe she put this out when she was 16. It's impressive. She had a number one hit, you know, for months. You saw a lot of people cover it for acapella. You know, um, it's incredible how long that lasted. And it's a great song. And when I first listened to the CD, I had this idea that it sounded a lot like Lana Del Rey. Um, and I really was really high on that album last year. It was in my top 25. Both CDs actually were in the top 25 for that. Um, and it was really cool to hear this dark idea, um, you know, this somber singing rather than, you know, upbeat, we're going to party all the time, stuff like that. And, and with Royals where you, she was talking about, um, you know, we'll never be Royal. It's not in our blood, you know, all this idea of being high class and, you know, having a party and stuff like that doesn't appeal to her. And, um, a lot of the songs, you know, talk about, partying or about school or about, you know, the the ideas of growing up, the hardships of it. 
so, because that's where she's at right now. Um, so I do commend her for what she was doing. However, if I had the basis compared to Lana Del Rey's CD last year, uh, it doesn't stand up as much in terms of memorability because I feel like a lot of the Lana Del Rey songs feel a little bit more diverse, and I honestly like her singing over uh, Lordy's, but um, it's still a great CD to listen to, and um, I listened to both the this one and the deluxe version of it. The uh, original one goes about 37 minutes, while the deluxe goes 56. Listen to either or. Yeah, they're both very good. It's just, for me, in terms of memorability and in terms of diversity of, of song choice, it's not um, up there with some of the other ones. Uh, so I hope to see what she does next, but as of now, it's only at number 46 for me. Number 45, uh, now my dad's friends will probably be a little bit more mad at me for the, this one, but this is Gregory Porter's Liquid Spirit. Um, I told my friends in the Valco Jazz Department that I was doing this list, and they kept saying, you have to listen to Greg Reporter's CD. It's phenomenal. It's fantastic. Um, and to their credit, he won the Vocal Jazz um, Best Vocal Jazz Album of the Year for Grammys. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just for me, when in terms of other jazz CDs this year, it doesn't hit as its mark because it's not as memorable. And I guess that's a little bit on me because I haven't listened to it as much as, say, some of the other jazz albums. But when it comes to it, I, for me, like, vocal jazz albums are hit or miss because there isn't as much, it, it's not, it's not, there's not, not much originality, but it's more like, you, you get to have a lot longer songs when it comes to jazz if you are, you know, in a, um, a quartet or, you know, a, a band without a vocalist rather than if you had one because usually your songs... Uh, I'll give you an example. Kenny Garrett's CD, I think most of the songs were about seven or eight minutes, maybe even nine or ten, whereas I believe a lot of the Gregory Porter stuff was four or five minutes long. You can't have as much ideas because you know, you have a vocalist featured. So I think it was a great CD, but in terms of is it as good as some of these other vocal CDs this year? It's not. Um, so, but before I leave you with it, um, I definitely want to say, like, when I first listened to him, even though my friends thought me a little bit crazy for it, I thought he sounds a lot like Kurt Elling, and I, he's one of, personally one of my favorite singers out there. Um, he doesn't have the the showmanship that Kurt Allen does, I believe, but um, he also makes up for it for being a wonderful piano player. So um, definitely take a listen to it if you are interested in vocal jazz. I mean, you can't go wrong. It won Grammy of the Year for it. Um, especially listen to When Love Was King, because that is a ble beautiful song, and I honestly thought it was a standard that he was covering. But it was, I believe, from what I understand, unless I'm looking in the wrong places, it is an original song by him, and he just takes it out of the park. Um, and I believe that's the second to last song on the album, but it is a song you need to listen to, whether or not you want to listen to this whole CD. Just listen to that song first. And if you don't like it, then stay away from the CD. But if you do, definitely take a listen to the CD. Uh, because honestly, it's... I believe it, I couldn't find the, the, the total time, but I believe it's about 40, 45 minutes. So it's not that bad in terms of time. Um, 44, I think 44 is going to be even more disappointing in terms of my vocal jazz friends than number 45 because of what I put up above Gregory Porter. But I really, really like this CD, and because it's not as long it doesn't wear on you. Like, this is the, the shortest CD so far, and it only clocks in at 32 minutes. Um, but every song on there, you know, works with the time it has. Um, and this is Panic at the Disco's Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die. Um, now, honestly, I, a big thing for me in terms of CDs is the first song. You need to be able to catch your, your audience on the first song. And if you don't, then you you might as well be wasting their time. Um, the one band that I had a, put in the top five for CDs last year was uh, Soundgarden's King Animal. But their first song was 
god awful, and I will tell everyone that. If you want to listen to that CD, do not listen to their first song. And unfortunately, they made it their first single, so they did themselves dirty on that. But the rest of the CD for that is fantastic. Um, Panda Disco, uh, This Is Gospel, it's the first one that I heard on that album. And it is, to me, when I listen to it, it's a lot like hide and seek to me in terms of like the idea, the overdubbing of voices, um, a lot of just acapella type idea. And it's beautiful. Unfortunately, the one, like, the one thing for me is that it's too short. I wish I could hear a little bit more of it, because I feel like there's a little bit more that could go with that. Um, but it starts the, the CD very well, and then Miss Jackson comes in, and it's a totally different vibe. Um, and it's, like, awesome, and it has a great groove, and it's just as good as This Is Gospel. Um, and it, it, it keeps going on. And honestly, there's only, I believe, ten songs on the CD, and some of them aren't very memorable, which is why I have this a lot lower than some of the other shorter CDs with a lot of less songs. But the ones that do stand out to me are very, very good. Like Girls, Girls, Boys, which um, if you ever watch the video, it does an homage to uh, D'Angelo's uh, How Does It Feel Untitled. And that's a beautiful song. And this is just a great way of um, doing an homage to it. And then the last song I want to talk about on that album is called the end of all things has a lot of the same idea with uh, this is gospel, but it's a lot more somber and it's really really beautiful. Um, I don't think it's the long last song on the CD, but if it is, it's a great way to end it. So that's number forty four. Number thirty three is uh, a CD that I didn't think I was going to like because of the first two songs on the CD uh, when the fire starts to burn. It's a particular song, and, if, and it's weird because it came out to be like this huge hit, but I thought it wasn't going to go anywhere, and um, it to me, when I first started listening to the CD, it was just too much techno, not enough substance, and I hate that with a lot of these ideas, because just because it's techno doesn't mean you can't have substance with it, but um, it got better, a lot better with um, Latch, and that's one of my... I would put that in my top 20 for songs of the year. Um, sorry, by the way, this song, CD is disclosure, uh, settled by Disclosure. And uh, it works very well with a lot of the other stuff. It's a very long CD. It's 60 minutes, but um, it has a lot of substance where I didn't think it was going to be. Where Fool For You is, is really good. Uh, Latch Again by Sam, with Sam Smith. And if... You haven't heard of any of his other stuff. He has a beautiful voice. And I believe he came with a, a CD this year. I haven't listened to it yet, but I want to listen to it. It's definitely up there for stuff I want to listen to. Um, where it drops off a little bit for me is the ending part. But just listening to the beginning songs is enough for me to listen to it again. It makes me want to listen to more of it. Because, unfortunately, it's not as memorable for the, the latter part. So that's why it's so low. But... If you like this type of stuff and you want like techno with a little bit more substance, this is a CD for you. Uh, there's only two more, and then I'm out for this one. Uh, 42, another one where probably people are not going to be, you know, happy to hear it from here. But it's uh, Beyonce's self-titled album. Now, when people were talking about Kanye's album, another reason why they were like, "Oh my God, this is amazing," because of it's because of how little people knew about it. Um, you know, he hinted about stuff, but no one dropped any, there wasn't any leaking or any, uh, no, none of that other stuff. Um, and people were like, oh, this is going to be a mystery. What is this going to be? And then, you know, he had the Saturday Night Live uh, performances, and then that's it, uh, until the CD came out. And I think the hype helped with it. Beyonce, to me, pulled a better Kanye than Kanye did, because... It came out around Christmas, and no one knew about it. She literally just slipped it on iTunes, and people went crazy. And um, unfortunately, I'm not a huge Beyonce fan. I like some of the singles that she does. I know how popular she is. And honestly, I, I took a listen to it, not as, you know, it being Beyonce, but as an album. And as an album, I think it's fantastic. But unfortunately... It doesn't, it's not as memorable. I think it's because of too much of a good thing 
it just turns into like I honestly can't remember of any of the good stuff. Um, I remember Partition. I remember Drunken Love, and I love Blue, the the last song. But in terms of everything else, I feel like it flows so well that it actually was too continuous for me to remember everything on it. And that also might be because of when I was listening to it. The first time I listened to it was at work, and uh, I couldn't pay attention to it as much as I wanted to. The second time, um, I couldn't really listen to it that well because it was a sped-up version on YouTube, and unfortunately, it didn't really work that well. Um, so this is definitely one that I think if I listen to it more, I could probably put in my top 25. But for right now, it's 42. Um, another reason why it's kind of up there is because of it is very continuous but it's also very long it's a 66 minute cd um and for i know for a lot of people that is a turnoff because there are a lot of stuff that people ought to do and i know that a lot of people just listen to music for the singles so that is unfortunate but it is a cd to listen to um that you should listen to if you're a beyonce fan or if you're a pop fan and she, she there, there is a reason why she out of the top 10 people in 2013 in terms of artists, in terms of, you know, gross sales, she was, n like, number nine. That's popular. That's crazy when thinking that she put out in late December, and, you know, there were CDs like Miley Cyrus, like uh, Lady Gaga and all that stuff, but she outsold all of them, which is crazy to think about. But, you know, you can't go wrong on that then. And the last one I'm doing for this particular round is uh, Arcade Fire's Reflector. Um, now, again, this is another one of those CDs that is extremely long. This is actually the longest one that might be on my list. Um, but it clocks in without the bonus songs, 75 minutes. And if you find the secret bonus songs, it's 85 minutes. Now, that is a very long time for a CD. But why it works is because unlike the, the, the flow of Beyonce where it's continuous and you can't really remember everything, at least for my part... Everything feels so fresh, and and like with Elton John, like just has a different story to it. And honestly, it has this mystery to me because I don't know if it's a concept album or not. I feel like there part of it is, but it makes me want to listen to it again because I want to figure out this concept. Um, ones that stood out to me definitely are Porno, which I think is a great song. It has a, a very funny message. Reflector, the the lead single. Uh, it's a great song and it got me hooked onto the CD um, and Joan of Arc which came out of left field for me in terms of everything else that was on there um, I, I believe the other one that really stood out to me was Here Comes the Night and it just all these different feels because like Porno I believe was in normal peer, normal person was like straight up rock Reflector was more you know um, had it was a, a lot longer song and it had a lot more depth to it. Uh, Journal of Arc was kind of like, I can't really explain it that well, but it had this like feel of like 80s rock. Well, not really 80s rock, but like 80s or 70s rock. Um, and then like, um, now Here Comes the Night had the idea of like Caribbean feel with a little bit of pop in it too, a little bit of dance. So it all all around, it's a very cool experience to like like with um, the terror. It's a very cool experience and one that needs to be listened to um, without any other stimuli. So that's my part one, number fifty one through forty, and it was a little bit long, but also because I had an intro, so it should mostly should be about thirty minutes when they finally get done. And I'll try to be a little bit quicker next time, but that's my ideas. Uh, I'll put them down in the description again, or at least like where each one of them starts, so you can know. Um, I can tell you where every one of them is, I, where, where you can listen to them. Uh, I'll tell you now that Beyonce, I couldn't listen to. It's all, it, You can buy it on iTunes. I think I found it on YouTube a couple times, but they're not that good quality. Um, one other thing with uh, The Terror, which is another one that I didn't listen to on Spotify. It's on there, but I don't think it's the full length, so take a look listen to it if you don't find that it's also on Groove Shark, uh, but I'll put the the links of where you can find all of these. Most of them you can find on Spotify. And tomorrow you'll see part two. Let me know how you like it and uh, what I could do better because this is my first full uh, top ten or part one, I guess. So hope to see you all tomorrow.